Turkish election, I mean, the supervision uh, is by the High Council of Elections, and they the council is made up of the top judges, and the legal system is uh, also uh, independent, and uh, they are, uh, I mean, uh, there are few small complaints, but at the end, uh, the election committee uh, decides, and in, when we remember the last elections in Istanbul, I mean, normally if there is a vote rigging, uh, the op opposition, I, I know it in uh, Iraq or in other countries, the opposition parties say, you know, the government stole our, our vote. Uh, in Istanbul elections, the government side was complaining about some inconsistencies, etc. Et but at the end, there was a re-election uh, revoting, and uh, I mean the the I mean the issue is solved. So, and uh, so the it's very uh, transparent. The election system, each uh, each boxes, uh, each uh, ballot boxes are uh, you know voted and counted or uh, right away. I mean, if let's say the election ends or the voting ends at 6 p.m. I mean. Uh, at 6 p.m. they are closed and they uh, begin to, I mean, uh, begin to uh, count the votes. And there are, as uh, Dr. Bora said, uh, representatives from all parties and even the civilians can can join. Also, the outcome is uh, the as a as a document is posted on the on the door of the uh, of the of the room that where and where you have the ballot box. Uh, add something on that? Uh, sure, the, sure. The electoral commissions throughout the all uh, voting centers around Turkey is all, like Bora said, uh, has to be uh, present, presented by uh, each uh, member of party that is joining to the elections. That's number one. Number two, this is uh, this doesn't exist in, for instance, the United States that every single box can be uh, traced back. Who voted, how many people voted, who are registered to vote in that specific box. If there is a sort of a doubt on certain results of a certain box, certain center, uh, when the complaint is placed to a high electoral court, they can retrace how many ballots used, how many ballots casted, and uh, how many people who actually registered to vote there uh, whether they legitimately casted their votes or not. So this is all recorded and the records are kept physically. This is very important. Physically, all the records are, are kept, uh, must be kept, uh, and then they are uh, sealed by the uh, high electoral court. That's what I want to interfere. Yes, thank you, doctor. Uh, also, we know that because these outcomes of each box, which is, I think, about, you know, a thousand voters for each box, and they are counted and posted. So there are some, you know, uh, private news agencies or any voluntary group can also, uh, if they have members uh, to see all all the boxes, they have an independent system of tracking the vote or even the news agencies. They are declaring ahead of, let's say, the government uh, Anatolian agency uh, to, to make it, you know, quicker and stuff and official counting also. But at the end, they all add up to the same number. So sometime maybe one agency uh, adds quickly and one region than the other. So uh, it, it is uh, it's pretty much uh, transparent. And we don't have the uh, machine-wise voting system because it is problematic. And I don't, I, 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 I don't agree with uh, or uh, I don't support this mechanical computerized voting because you can uh, rig it plus each each document has also maybe a tracking number or something like that can be matched to the person if that person knows that his his vote will be uh, known or uh, uh, find out then he will be uh, worried and voting maybe to to another party, he be scared. So the the idea is not to scare the voter, and to let him to to vote by, by his conscience. So this is the uh, I I mean I know also uh, like the computer uh, reads the document, but uh, who knows if 
it is computerized. Who knows? Somebody wrote, write something else, and maybe he wrote it for A, and the computer says uh, to B, and it's it's possible to hack or rig uh, the outcomes uh, uh, even without any any tired uh, tiredness. So. Uh, the like voting system is very transparent. Let's come to the opposition. We have uh, Mehmet uh, Çelik Bey. He is, of course, uh, more focused on the uh, uh, foreign affairs. But if if you wanna, we also have Omar Karim from uh, our colleague and brother from Pakistan. I wanna get his opinion from outside, uh, and I will check the questions also. But. Uh, let's focus on the inside. Uh, if Mehmet Bey, uh, I forced him a little bit to uh, focus inside, but uh, please go ahead if you uh, if you can. Why the opposition? I mean, why the tide changed? Like last year, uh, economic problems, Ukraine war, and you know uh, the tide was against the uh, AK Party Erdogan, and the opposition was very very cheerful. What happened? Do you think? Go ahead, please. Hi, um, and, and thanks for facilitating this uh, space. I think it's very beneficial as we are, you know, uh, as everyone else is saying, Turkey's elections will be the most important elections in 2023. Um, with regards to the opposition and why is the tide changing? Before going into that, I just want to comment on the previous topic and the previous uh, points were being made. You know, with regards to the... Economists cover or Washington Post or the, the Guardian's headlines. I think the whole idea behind these headlines and, and the whole, you know, in quote, quote unquote, the dictator uh, discourse, to me, that's not a, a, an attack on Ak Party or President Erdogan, but I think it's an insult to people's wills. I mean, we just spoke about how the elections are transparent how we, you know, elections for us are, you know, some sort of democratic celebration for us. We are very proud of our democratically, you know, democratically held elections, and we, we know they are transparent. You know, here and there we do experience some sort of small incidents, which are later either the elections are repeated or through some sort of, you know, mechanisms they are, uh, they are uh, you know, corrected. But overall, Turkey has a very mature democracy, as, as Bora also said. So I think the, 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 this whole dictator or the whole authoritarianism uh, rhetoric or discourse or the attacks are attacks, uh, you know, and insults to, to the people's will and the Turkish voters, let alone them being attacks or campaigns against President Erdogan or AK Party itself. So that's, I just wanted to mention that before I answer your question. Now, if we look at the whole opposition stance, you know, we had the, the pandemic, first of all, and then the Ukraine war. So the economic dynamics uh, were, were uh, you know, Turkish economy was being, uh, being uh, influenced by these two major incidents, which have, you know, caused the whole global... Co do, you, do you also, Dr. Mehmet, do you also see a kind of attack or pressure on Turkish economy from... External forces, you know, Trump even he tweeted that we're going to destroy Turkish economy. And uh, I remember as, I mean, he say three waves of attacks on Turkish lira and Turkish economy. Do you agree with that? You know, you know, before going into, okay, so maybe I have to uh, push my my ideas a little bit back. I mean, go back a little and, and maybe, you know, take a couple more minutes to, to explain your, I mean, to answer your question and explain my point. Um, you know, what happens in Istanbul, Ankara, Diyarbakir, historically or elsewhere around Turkey, given our geopolitical location, geostrategic location, what happens within Turkey's borders does, is, 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 you know, influences the region, you know, entire region. So anything happens in this region is very important. Now, if we fast forward track to, uh, you know, the past 20 years, President Erdogan has shifted Turkey from an idle position to, 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 to one that is very dynamic, very progressive, you know, the one that puts Turkish interests, Turkey's interests first. For a long period of time, Turkey was in a position where it remained idle for its own territorial 
uh, you know, for in, its domestic interests and it was being told what to do. Now that this has changed with President Erdogan's past 20 years, now with many areas, you know, it's very now widely recognized how Turkey has progressed in many areas. No need to mention them now. But now that these have changed, uh, uh, Turkey's position has changed also. And now, uh, moving from regional, now Turkey is able to change dynamics internationally. I mean, one of the lines in, in Washington Post article was exactly this. The U.S. And, and EU would be better off without Erdogan's disruptive influence on world order. Turkey wasn't this disruptive uh, uh, influence before 20 years ago. Now that he has changed to this, of course, the areas of attack have widened also, where Turkey can be attacked from outside to minimize this influence. So economy is no doubt one of these areas. So, you know, as you mentioned with, with Trump saying that, but I think, you know, after 2010s, these attacks were gradually adding one to another and the, the sphere of influence of these attacks were widening. And I think we saw the peak of the, that with 2016 coup attempt. Um, after that, things have also, things have also been elevating. You know, every election time we see all these, uh, uh, attacks from Western media. Now we had the, with regards to the opposition's place, we had the pandemic. We had the, we have the Russian war. Turkey has its own, you know, some, some sort of economic challenges, uh, 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 which Turkey has been trying to change with a new economic model. So all these were playing uh, into the hands of the opposition. Now, if the opposition was one party, one strong party, or one unified ideology, they could per perhaps capitalize on this and turn the tide into a permanent strong opposition against President Erdogan. That's one thing. The other thing is, that, you know, if President Erdogan wasn't such a political genius uh, who, who could, who has been successfully, you know, progressively turning things, uh, uh, you know, changing things when there is a problem, they could probably defeat it despite the fact that defeat President Erdogan in the next elections very easily, despite the fact that they are not very unified. Now, President Erdogan's political strength, his ability to maneuver things around, you know, economically or, or with regards to political dynamics in Turkey, um, if, uh, you know, the fact that he's able to do this, in addition to the fact that the opposition is not a stable of opposition, I mean, if we look at the, the six plus one uh, entity that we call the table for six, if we look at them ideologically, they're not unified. Uh, politically, in terms of their political worldview, of course, they're not unified. In, in terms of their agreements on foreign policy, on economics, or social issues, they're not unified. The only thing that remains is their anti erdogan stance. Now, they talk about very vague terms, you know, concepts. We want a, a more democratic Turkey. Okay, AK Party says the same thing. So this is not something tangible. They want a better economy. What is your economic program? There is not no tangible, no specific uh, answer to this question, which create which could create some sort of hope in the people's eyes as an alternative to President Erdogan. Now, these lack of unity, lack of um, creating hope for the people. Uh, coupled with President Erdogan's efforts in every area to bring, uh, to, to, to change things around uh, economically for the better, or to turn things in, an, in a positive way, his quick ability to, to shift things around, um, you know, puts the opposition uh, in a very weak, uh, uh, weak, uh, play, a weak place uh, as an alternative, given the fact that our President Erdogan has been uh, governing you know, with his party for the past 20 years, and they should be tired by now, but they are not. They should be easy, able to defeat it after 20 years, but they are not. This is not, doesn't mean that the, the, the AK party government doesn't have any area for improvement. Yes, they do, but they are the ones who are able to, they are the ones who are able to change things around and, uh, you know, improve themselves because they compete with against themselves in the lack of, uh, you know, where, where there is no uh, effective op opposition, unfortunately. You know, something that President Erdogan himself frequently says, he says, it is our luck that, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a strong opposition in Turkey. You know, we don't have a strong rival uh, in Turkey. He says, 
you know, he says, for this is something that we wish there existed, a sustainable opposition, an opposition that would add to, you know, come be, be an alternative so that the government itself could work harder um, in some areas. But our party only competes against itself. Yes, these elections, the things are a little bit different because every other party is unified against President Erdogan. Uh, um, and and the, the whole economy um, and factor in the equation is a challenge against uh, the AK Party's re-election as a, as a, you know, as a uh, government or President Erdogan's re-election as a president. But the opposition in Turkey, uh, unfortunately, is not able to create that alternative. The only opposition in Turkey right now is the economy and President Erdogan's, you know, uh, with social housing, uh, with the with the pension plans, with the you know increasing minimum wage, and all these uh, you know swift moves have been you know ch- able, he has been able to change the tide, despite the fact that every other party is basically unified uh, against President Erdogan. These are just my two cents, and uh, thanks for 